action. Franklin Fairbanks was born in upstate Brownsburg in 1828, and he started climbing stuff when he was five years old. And he started out with like sticks and or stones and bird nests, and then he moved on to greater things, um, such as some of the stuff he was. And this was his original collection. And he originally stored everything in the top floor of his house, um, called Undercliff. And eventually, his and he kept it open to the public on Sundays. Eventually, his um, collection got so big, his wife told him, "You know what? Get everything out of the house, go and go build a museum." There's too much stuff here anymore. So that's exactly what he did. This is a museum. Um, when it was being built, can you notice anything different about the picture up here? And it's not the lines. So actually, there's an extra wing added on five years later because he decided to just need more space, and that wing is where the Omni Globe is now. So this is um, Mr. Gulch. He did most of the taxidermy, most of the animals in the museum. He made these beautiful um, dioramas just using only a couple of materials. And he didn't really move out of Vermont much, so because of that, he made a few interesting mistakes, is which we're going to touch on today, um, of what he thought of these things would be to like patients. But you have to like cut off last or second. So there are many different animals who used to live in the museum. Among this was um, a Mexican double yellow head parrot. His name was Junior. He lived at the museum from um, 1966 until he died in 1974. Um, among Junior the parrot, there also was an ocelot and a raven, though I believe the raven lived outside of the museum. So this comes to the first bird we're going to um, show you. And this is called the white bellbird at Campanero. And it is called the white bellbird for the bell-like sound it makes, although I personally think it sounds more like a car horn honking. Um, so, Balch made a mistake on this diorama, and can you guys notice what this might be? So, actually, there is, um, the wattle that should over, hang over, over the side of the white bellbird's nose is actually sticking straight up. Therefore, we will nickname this bird the unicorn bird sometimes. And, though Balch, this bird lives in South America, so Balch would not have known what this bird would have looked like when he got it. He's just like, okay, well, you know what, stick straight up. There you go. Um, so the female bellbird is more of an olive colored with yellow streaks on its belly and it does not make the bellic sound. Cut. Action. So there are six different snakes in this cage. Unfortunately, none of them are rattlesnakes, but rattlesnakes will turn into the next animal we're going to be talking about. So I thought I'd just uh, mention them a little bit right here. So rattlesnakes are the leading cause for um, snake bite, but they will rarely ever bite you, and even before they bite you, they'll have the trademark rattle to run you away. Um, and then, even if you are bit, it's rarely ever fatal, especially if treated quickly. So, everyone's afraid of rattlesnakes, and so I thought it'd be cool to see what the native Indians would think of these rattlesnakes. So I found a story that the Cherokee made that was how, a, um, how they got a song to keep rattlesnakes away from them, so I thought I'd tell it to you right here. So there was once uh, a couple kids outside playing a game, and they started screaming. So their mother came out and saw a rattlesnake in the grass, and without thinking, killed it. And um, she didn't think much of it, and then later on that night, her husband, on his way home, um, saw a bunch of rattlesnakes wailing. He's like, oh, what's the matter? And they're like, well, your wife just killed our chief, yelled rattlesnake, and now we need our revenge. And so he's like, okay, well, what can I do? And they're like, okay. I'll just go home and get your wife outside. So he went home and he asked her for a quart of water and she went out to get something from the well. And in the process of doing that, the black rouse and bit her in the ankle and she was severely injured. After a while, the rattlesnakes came and um, told them that thank you, we have gotten her revenge now. For this, um, we will teach you the rattlesnake prayer song, which will keep any rattlesnakes from biting you, and if anyone ever does accidentally bite you, sing this over the people and they will be healed. Action. So these are their Virginia opossums, and um, these tie into the rattlesnakes because these are almost completely immune to rattlesnake venom, also among other poisons. So there is another mistake in this cage, so let's see if you guys can find it. So, um, adult opossums cannot actually hang by their tails, although they will use their tails as a fifth limb when climbing a tree or else when they need to, um, carry something back. So, um, it would be interesting to see because, um, the 
rabies vaccination that's been here. I wonder if they've used opossums to get this rabies vaccination because opossums are eight times less likely to get rabies than the wild dog is. Um, so I'm sure you guys have all heard of the term playing possum before. And this came from the opossums. And this comes from the involuntary um, action of falling unconscious when they're threatened by things nearby. And so they'll fall unconscious. It lasts anywhere from 40 minutes to four hours. They have no control over this. And during the time, they'll look and smell just like a dead animal. One interesting thing to note is, is that um, vultures are very smart, but they also eat dead animals. And how do they know that these opossums aren't actually dead? Or do they not know they're not actually dead? So these are the flamingos. There are actually two mistakes in this diorama. One of them was made by William Bulge, the other one was made by a curator here in the 1960s. So, um, let's see if you can find out what the first one is. So, in reality, flamingos cannot and do not eat frogs. They get their pink color from eating shrimp. And then when they're juveniles, or else if they were to be in captivity, they would be a white color as the juvenile in the back. So the other mistake in this cage is, is that one that actually is entertaining, but it also fits in very well. So back in the 1960s, they used to use beer and baking soda as of frosting, and they frosted the top of the glass of this um, diorama with this. And then this curator accidentally let some drip down, and it went off the backside of the flamingo. And if you look back there closely, you can actually see the droppings on the flamingo's tail. But... Um, it's not that visible, and where it dropped, it looks like the flamingo has just used the bathroom, and the other animal is go the other flamingo is going to look at it. 